David here with Fig Boot on Pens. I like pens with stories, ones that I can tie back to, to personal experiences. Uh, the pen I'm going to talk about today is one of those pens with a story, and the pen is right here. So what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about how I obtained this pen, and then we'll go over some of the parts of the pen, and then uh, some of the things I like and some of the things I, I don't care for about it, and then we'll show you some measurements, and we'll finally we'll do a writing sample. I was several months into being serious about fountain pens when I discovered the Franklin Christoph brand. Uh, I thought some of the pens in their line looked interesting, and then I happened to notice that they were headquartered very near where I live, maybe about 35 minutes away. So on their site, I noticed that they state that customers are welcome by appointment to visit their headquarters to review the product line and potentially purchase a pen. Uh, I hadn't been to a fountain pen manufacturing facility before, so I, I thought it would be a, a fun experience. And took some pictures as well. So here's the outside of the facility, which is located in a nice business park in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Uh, once you enter, you're led into their showroom. Uh, and here they have a sample of uh, samples of all their models, which are on the trays that are on, on the back table. Uh, the red tin on the display case contains the, the bottles of each of the Franklin Kristoff inks to sample. And the, the black trays right next to the ink are, are something very cool. Uh, they have pens with all of their different nib options there, inked up and, and ready for you to test out. They have their steel nibs, they have their gold nibs, and all of the uh, Masayama nibs as well. Uh, Franklin Kristoff features specialty uh, nibs customized by the uh, Nibmeister uh, Michael Matsuyama and in the showroom they also have samples of their high quality paper, their portfolios, their pen cases, things along those lines as well. Uh, you can see a bit through the window but through that door is their production room where they actually uh, make the pens. It was very cool to test out all the different models and nibs and in the end I purchased a Model 66 Stabilis which we'll see here in just a minute with an ice finish and a, a medium steel nib. Uh, Jim then invited me back to his workstation where he assembled my pen and made sure that the nib was properly aligned and performed a little fine-tuning to make sure the pen performed to my specifications. Uh, then he inked up the pen and went as an eyedropper and with the ink of my choice. Uh, as Jim finished up, Scott Franklin, the owner of Franklin Kristoff, stopped by and thanked me for my purchase. And uh, he was gracious enough to give me a, a little tour of the manufacturing side of their building to show me some of their production process as well. Uh, he preferred that no pictures be taken of their machinery, but here's a picture of some, uh, some barrels, sections, and, and caps for a couple of different models uh, in a few uh, different finishes. Once I got home, I took a couple of, of pictures. Uh, he, there's the leather case that comes with the pen, which is very nice, and here's just the pen. Uh, it's very, very cool, and the ice finish is just amazing. So here it is, the Model 66 Stabilis. Uh, this specific design is the same as all of their other demonstrator pens that they uh, have in the office for all of their nips. The story goes that folks kept asking for uh, this particular model and if they could purchase it when they were trying out the nibs and so the, the Franklin Kristoff began producing the design. Uh, the ice finish is really, really neat. Basically, once the pen is tooled, there's a process that it goes through to then add the ice finish to the inside. And it's only on the inside, the outside is perfectly smooth. Uh, the finish kind of makes it look like the nib is like frozen under a lake. Just really, really cool. Uh, the cap gives the appearance of being short, but I, I think it's really due to the overall length of the pen. Uh, there is, is no clip and, and no roll stop on the cap at all. Um, it has a, a slight taper down to, or taper up to the barrel, and a very slight step down as well. And then the barrel is perfectly straight, and then just slowly tapers down here at the end. Uh, and then there is a, a clear part here at the end, and the, the very end is just flat as well. Um, there is a flattened part of the barrel right here which acts as a roll stop. Uh, you could see it in the pictures that I took. Uh, it would be tough to hear, hear, see here but it does say Franklin Kristoff Model 66 right here and there's a little flattened part of the barrel that prevents it from rolling around. It has a screw cap and it will post securely. It's not going anywhere. Um, overall the pen is rather light. Uh, but so is the cap, so posting it doesn't 
uh, back weight the pen, pen at all and you could really hardly feel it's there. So whether you use it posted or unposted, it doesn't add too much to the length and even though it's a long pen it doesn't make it comically large. Uh, and like I said, it's very, very light. Uh, and just because this pen is light, it doesn't uh, mean it feels cheap. Uh, it doesn't. It feels like quality materials. Here's a nice close-up picture of the nib. Uh, this pen retails for $170. A gold nib will add another $90. And a Masayama grind will add only $15, which is a great bargain to have a nib ground by one of the best nib meisters in the world. Uh, this steel nib is very nice. Uh, the section tapers down a little bit and then flares back up and uh, there is a slight step up to uh, the barrel. And this, the, the, uh, the section is very comfortable and not slippery at all. And if you notice right here, the cap threads are not at the back of the section, they're actually at the front of the section here. Uh, and that so if you hold your pen a bit back then you're really not going to be gripping any threads whatsoever now I have a tendency to hold my pens right at the end of the section uh, and so I was at first concerned that it might be uncomfortable but it wasn't uh, the the threads are rather large and, and kind of blocky and not uh, sharp at all and so I really don't even notice them at all even though I grip right on them um, at, at times it is easy for the cap to get a bit loose uh, you really, if you really don't tighten it down completely all the way, uh, it really only takes a single turn of the pen to open it up. Uh, I was testing a couple other pens, and usually it's about a twist and a half or two turns of the pen in order to to uh, to open it. But this one, it's literally just one, and so um, you just got to make sure that you keep it. Uh, if it's twisted tight just a little bit, then it's fine. But if if not, then it might have a tendency to come off a little bit. Um, the, the Model 66 comes with a standard international cartridge, but it would be a crime to not use this pen as an eyedropper. Uh, that uh, it would just be uh, a crime because this thing is amazing. And to see the, the ink sloshing around in here, which we'll see later, is just amazing. So um, I wanted to thank Scott Franklin for his hospitality and everyone else at Franklin Christoph as well. I mean, everyone there was amazing and really made the experience of purchasing one of their pens something truly special for me. So if you ever find yourself in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, I would highly, highly recommend a visit to their facility to purchase one of their pens. So let's show you some measurements and then I'll ink up the pen and do a writing sample. Here we go with the writing sample for the Franklin Christoph Model 66. Uh, we're going to go ahead and eyedropper this. I've gone ahead and put some silicone grease and put that around the threads. And then we're going to use some Franklin Christoph ink. Uh, this is terra firma and uh, I really, really like this color. There's an, an example. It's very earthy and it's turned into one of my favorite browns and it behaves very well. So I, I like this ink very much. So let's go ahead and we will eyedropper this. Now, I'm a little bit particular about this, but when I eyedropper a pin, I really want to make sure that I don't get any ink on the threads itself because then once it's twisted around, you get ink in there and it looks kind of junky. So one of my big things is trying to make sure I'm all the way down before expelling some of the ink. I don't know if I got enough in there, so we'll see. That'll do for now. We'll just make sure we take care of that so we don't have any incidents. Then we'll go ahead and put the section back on. And now you can kind of see it sloshing around in there and it just looks amazing. So here we go with the writing sample for the Franklin 
Kristoff. Model 66. And this is a medium steel nib. And the ink we're using, like I said before, is Franklin Christoph Terra Firma. And a little writing sample. Lazy dog. Now, this steel nib is a bit on the stiff side. Uh, there's not a ton of line variation that you can get. You can squeeze out a very small amount, uh, but it is really not a nib that is going to flex a great deal. Um, it does lay down a, a good line. I think the ink is a bit on the dry side, but um, it does lay down a nice, healthy line of ink. And if you like reverse writing, it can be done. It's a little bit on the scratchy side, but it does lay down a nice extra fine line. In regard to fast writing, there's no problems whatsoever. So there you go, the Franklin Christoph Model 66. Uh, it is a unique pen that I enjoy very much and one that I highly recommend. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye.